What's up, everyone? It's episode 811, baby, and you can see behind me a beautiful, and I mean beautiful, 83 XL. It belongs to Justin Sharon. Now, by the way, Sharon or something like that, when you send in the pictures of the bike, you take full responsibility for me screwing your name up. I am in a hooked on phonics dropout, so I might screw your name up, and you take that responsibility. Anyway, it is bored out to 1050 cc's, has cams, cams and lifters. Whew. I love this thing. <laughs> I love it. And uh, other custom made parts. Beautiful bike, Justin. Beautiful bike. Again, I do have your submissions. They're going in order right now, and I will inform you when they are going to be shown on the show. Coming up, we have a situation here. Yes, we have a situation I am not happy with. The main story is about the Hells Angels being screwed with now, be it in Canada, but here in the United States, it happens all the time. And that is clubhouses. I don't know what it is. The cops don't want them at a bar. Cops don't want them at rallies. Crap, cops just don't want them out on the street. So when they go and get their own clubhouses, do their thing in private. Next thing you know, well, it was illegal. What's it going to take for you schlucks to lay off the peckers? You got to make up your mind one of these days what you want. Don't want them here. Don't want them there. So they go and get their own place. Now, this has been going on since the early 70s, late 60s, where clubs would go get their own clubhouse because they were tired of getting harassed going to the local bar. And they're still getting harassed till this day. So we got that story coming up, and it's, it is. It's really sickening, man. It's like, give me a break already. Enough's enough of the harassment in Canada, United States, Oz, Europe. Enough with messing with people's clubhouse. One thing that they do use is the health department. They use zoning. They did it to a chapter here in Rockford with the Hells Angels. They had a beautiful clubhouse. Came in with the zoning BS. Shut them down. The health hazard stuff. It wouldn't happen to any other business. But because it was a motorcycle club. They were idiots about it. Minding our own business. They shut it down. And they always zero in. On the liquor sales. Well guess what. They're buying tickets. They're not exchanging cash at the bar. And plus, it's private property. It's not like they're opening to the public running an actual bar. Oh, little drinks here and there. Little party in here and there. Fundraising. But you can't even let them be. You can't let no club be because you have a lust. To go after these clubs. And that is BS. I don't see you raiding. Any of these. Law enforcement motorcycle club clubhouses. I don't see it. I haven't seen it in the news. So what's the difference? Why do you target them? Because you don't like their philosophy? Because you think they're white trash. Or they're dirtbags? God forbid you target anybody else. We have another story coming up about an RC doing 
a lot of good, but at the same time, it burned my balls. You hear all these clubs once they get featured in the newspaper or RCs or social clubs about how they want to change the image of ways clubs are perceived. Well, we do this, we do that. Well, I hate to tell you, man, the one percenters are the ones who are really, really involved in this kind of stuff. They really set the standard. So the argument, well, we want people to perceive clubs different, come on, really? Do your good, but don't push this narrative. Because all it does is make your fellow bikers and your club member, fellow club members look like they're doing something wrong. Anyway, let's go to the first story. We got Easy Rider in Sturgis. Check out this video. This weekend in Sturgis, the Biker Rodeo News Center 1's Jacob Jones takes us to the action at the Buffalo Chip. Since 1989, Easy Rider Magazine has partnered with Sturgis Buffalo Ship to host what they call Biker Rodeos. These rodeos are a series of motorcycle games and competitions such as a slow race where the last one to cross the finish line is the winner, a barrel race, a balloon toss where backseat riders throw a water balloon over an obstacle and catch it on the other side. Eight, 1989, it was the first rodeo out here and I was here and of course we won. And then here I am again, but now I'm directing the biker game so everybody can have a fun. Everybody get out here and have some fun and ride their motorcycles. The event also has a hot dog eating contest where back riders try to catch and eat a hot dog while on a moving motorcycle. They also have a kickstart contest where contestants see how many times they can kickstart their bike. It's, it's really the kickstart contest because I hold the record. <laughs> I, I got mine started 32 times in one minute in 1983 and then we didn't do it no more because everybody's got electric starts. So finally it's like, well, let's start doing it again because the younger guys got kickstart bikes. The winner of today's kickstart contest was a man from British Columbia, Canada, who kickstarted his 1962 Panhead 13 times in under one minute. Definitely hurt my knee and my thigh is on fire, but that was fun. Um, difficult for sure, but new spark plugs I think helped with that one. The contest also has kids as young as 13 performing wheelies and doing barrel racing. We let them play in the easy games, you know, I mean, the, the barrel push. Uh, in fact, the kids are better at the barrel push because the tire pushes the barrel up and it doesn't roll as fast. So they can control them better. So the kids kick butt this weekend on that. At Sturgis Buffalo Chip, Jacob Jones, New Center One. Awesome stuff right there. Has anybody heard if Chilli uh, they found another spot because the Chillicotti said, go screw yourselves or something like that? Because the cops were pricks and said, well, we're not going to work it anymore. It puts our officers in danger. Well, you know, last time, you know, you ran from a uh, shooting or something like that in Florida. You know, I ain't going to say nothing. I'm trying not to be a dick. Anyway, has anybody heard about it? I haven't checked into it, man. I'll have to be serious about that. I haven't checked in on that stuff. Let me know what you guys uh, found out. Anyway, here we go. We got Twisted Ones. Motorcycle Club holds meal for families. This is out of North Carolina. Twisted ones, there's a picture. Hey, what's with the shorts nowadays, man? I'm getting kind of confused. I am. I'm getting kind of confused here. I've been seeing it around my area where they're riding with these jean shorts, these dickies. This ain't safe. If you take the asphalt ride, you're going to get tore up. So, can somebody please explain why shorts are now cool? I get it. On hot days and stuff like that, it sucks. But bear through it. Safety, man. Safety. Let's see here. There's something twisted afoot in Hertford. Well, actually, it's a wheel. The <laughs> He's trying to be cute. The Twisted One is the name of the motorcycle club whose founding chapter is based in Hertford. We began the club five years ago to create an environment where like-minded brothers can have commentary and enjoy riding. This, according to the vice president, Ronald Ronnie Maupin, a UPS driver from Hertford. By the way, man... By the way, you UPS drivers, can you knock when a 
freaking packages delivered from Amazon. Will you do that, man? Uh, the club has over 40 members, raises money for causes, and gives back to the community. Yes, <laughs> MCs that are 1% do that too. The club hosted a hot dog and hamburger meal for kids and families. Rock and roll, this was the first time we sponsored the event in the community. We have done poker runs to raise money for people in need. But we want to bring our good will closer to home. Asked about the club, up uh, came up with its name. If you think about it, we're all a little twisted. Yes. Especially Hollywood. That's what they say anyway. Going up to Toronto, no major incidents during Hell's Angel event in Brooklyn. A total of 179 vehicles were processed through checkpoints. Now, we covered this story, actually, the other day. But one thing I wanted to do was bring this up in conjunction of what I'm about to talk about next. Over 179 bikers and clubs, whatever, were processed through this checkpoint. Nothing happened. No major stuff. But you have such a hard on for these clubs. And every time you look stupid, just like you did here. Don't you think the propaganda is getting a little thick? Come on, a lot of people are seeing through a lot of this stuff nowadays. They really are, man. So maybe you might want to give it up one of these days. And that leads into this story right here. Hell's Angels member did not get a dime for letting Gang run illegal pub from his home. That's what they always bring up. Illegal pub from his home. Now, one thing I have to say, this is Canada. So, I don't know the laws up there. That's just like I get asked to cover more news from around the world. And one of the re and I try, but one of the reasons is I do not know the culture over there. Come on. I was like, holy cow, there's a guy wearing Versace robes. Not a biker I know out of Australia that even comes close to an American biker. So those are the cultural differences. Lawyer says an illegal pub run from a Hells Angel gang pad. Oh, this ain't, uh, I'm sorry, correction, 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 correction. This ain't Canada, this is New Zealand. My bad, I should have uh, looked into the story more. Sorry! And New Zealand ain't Australia, by the way. Boy, do I hear about that one. Similar moves made uh, by the New Zealand Defense Force to curve drunken annex by soldiers. Now they're saying that they had the clubhouse open to the public. I don't believe that, man. I don't believe that. Uh, the submission was made during the uh, sentencing of Lyle Charles Henwood. Uh, on you know in court he was fined two thousand dollars for allowing people to run the bar at the gang's Palmeriston North Pad. The maximum fine was forty thousand. And with sixty is a longtime Hell's Angel member who owns the pad. He owns it and rents it to the Angels for four hundred a week. Just a regular old landlord. There's no doubt the property is the gang's pad. The iconic Death Head logo is emblazoned on the main building facing the street. You guys really need to get a life, man. I'm telling you what, over there, it's the clubs that keep you in business. It, it really is, because that's what you do over there. Anyway, here's the one story I was talking about. Smoky River Riders Riding Club are set to dispel the stigma associated with motorcycle clubs through philanthropist stuff. That stigma is always going to be there because you have cops that have to pad their budgets 
So they go and do nothing but rile up everybody and go after clubs. You don't need to do that. You don't need to say that. Clubs are doing it every day helping out. Now it goes on to say there's a stigma or stigma associated with motorcycle clubs that typically sparks fear, loathing, or other unjust sediments in the community. That's bullshit. Let's say it together. Bullshit. That's not how the community looks at bikers. Hell, they feel safer around bikers. Shut up. Those sediments are what the Smoky River Riders Riding Club from McClellan are set to dispel as they continue their uh, efforts attempting to help people who are struggling in the Smoky River region and throughout the province. Now, club president Tammy Strout says the group was started when she purchased the motorcycle and on a whim started a Facebook group to alert people when she had and her partner, Wellen, were going for a ride. Ooh, I know where this is going right there. Yes, I better stop reading before I get myself in some trouble. But you see what I mean. You get tired of this. You do. You get really tired of it. When they do nothing but harass property owners. New Zealand, I can see it because they got the stupid laws over there. Australia as well. But Canada. And again, that correction on that story was Canada. But here in the United States, when you have law enforcement shutting down stuff, when you're on your own private property, it's just insane. Anyway, we're going to go to the second half of the show live with China Dow. Time to have a good old time. We've got a serious subject coming up, man. It's going to be a freaking good one. Rock on. <laughs> 